All right, so it's been about a year and a half since we bought this house, and one of the things that I've wanted to do for quite some time is to build myself a box outside, a wooden box, that contains my garbage cans. Basically, uh, this box is going to be eight feet long by 32 inches deep, 48 inches high at the back, and 42 inches high at the front. All right, prior to starting the project, I went out and purchased pressure treated two by fours that will be the base of the project. Now we're just gonna mark out two foot centers. All right, so we're gonna be using some exterior wood glue as well as screws to screw the entire base together. That should make it very strong. We're gonna move on to installing the half inch pressure treated plywood. All right, so before we screw this whole top on, or square on, and make sure that we've got it nice and square. I'm going to build the side walls. So I want the top of uh, the top lid of this to be on a bit of an angle for the water to run off. So I've gone with a 46 inch front and a 48 inch back. So now I'm gonna take this board, I'm gonna lay it down on here to the very back of the top of that piece and the inside top of this piece. Now I'm gonna draw a line and this is the angle that I'm going to want to be cutting. That looks pretty good right there at uh, 12 degrees. Alright, so I've gone ahead and added the center brace or stud. Now we're going to lift the walls up and fasten them down. And it looks like we've got 91 and a quarter. Now to determine what our seven uprights are going to be. All right, so with the back wall and side walls up, we move on to putting the cross member in here. Be the same length as uh, what we had down there on the bottom. All right, 
All right, I got my front rail and my back rail ready for the top. Cut my side rails, and in this case, I'm using a two by four for the back because I want the back to overhang slightly. Now to keep this lid light, I'm going to go with a 2x2 two two right in the middle, right here, and then the rest of them I'm going to use 1x2s. We'll once again go on 16 inch centers. Because I have a 2x4 on the back and I don't want to toenail this screw and I want it to come through, I'm actually going to drill a hole into the back of that 2x4. to add a couple of backer pieces uh, due to what I'm going to be doing for the outer cladding or finish on this box. Um, I need to have uh, some extra room for a couple of features. So we're going to add those two pieces in and then I'm going to show you what I'm doing to the front. Now when I built the shop, I used this fake stone to put on the corners of both of the front sides of the shop and I was left over with a bunch of these cutoffs because I needed to make some longer pieces and uh, I only had corner pieces so I just cut them right off and this is what I was left with. So normally when you're putting these stones on the side of a building you would use these clips. It holds the stone away from the wall allowing any water that gets in behind it to pass straight through being as this is just a garbage can enclosure we're not going to worry about that we're going to use some subfloor and deck adhesive to physically glue it to the corners of the front of this box So more for appearance than anything, uh, just so that it resembles the rest of uh, my shop over there. I've added some flashing here. I had some leftover flashing from some windows and from the stonework. So I decided that I would just flash that up over top of the stone. To get All right, let's move on to the cedar trim. Well, unfortunately my gimbal died in the middle of taping the uh, cedar trim installation, but there it is. That's what it is going to look like on the front. And same thing over on that side. So now we're going to move on to installing the J trim for the vinyl siding going to be using that triple vinyl siding that's the stuff that I have left over from doing the shop so I might as well use it up Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do our starter strip. This is a starter strip. It's got a groove in the bottom here. And basically, what happens is this piece on the back of your siding just slides right in the groove like that. Well, give myself about a quarter of an inch room for expansion. All right, we're going to move on to putting the siding on now. I've already done the back. Uh, the back is really basic. You just 
cutting all exactly the same length and then they just uh, snap into place and then nail on top so we'll do the side instead because we have a little bit of a step there that we have to deal with all right so i got my first piece in it was uh 28 and a half inches long square cut on both sides now this one here we have a little um spot where it goes over so we're gonna total length on this we're gonna go 29 and a half I'll cut that piece and be right back all right we got our 29 and a half inch piece now now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick this right up inside there like that and this will give me the spot where I need to cut out to so I'm gonna go with a bit of expansion room and I'm gonna come in right there about a quarter of an inch higher than that and then I'm going to need to cut the bottom out and the distance for that slide this in pull it back about a quarter of an inch and then we'll line that up with the inside of this piece with some expansion room so right about there Draw a line across there, down there, might have to come over a little bit there, and we're going to cut that out with a pair of shears. Well, let's have a look at how that fits. Get that side in, put my arm in behind here to bend it. down a little bit to get it in that slot and there we are all right last piece so I cut this at 29 and a half now what I'm going to do is just slide it in under there and put a mark where I need to cut it off at the top and then I'll do the same over on this side. Halfway up inside. Now we'll just draw a line. From those two points. And cut it on the table saw. Now this should get in there, no problem. There we go. And it's secured at the top, but I'm still going to put a screw in right about there. Good morning, everyone. It is day three. Uh, things got a little bit wet last night, rained again, and the temperature has dropped considerably. So Today we are going to be putting the Nova Shake um, vinyl shingle on top of the lid. So this is the product right here. It's uh, very much like vinyl siding in the way that you apply it. It has a ridge on the back that catches a slot in this spot right here. That's how they fit together and don't pop out and then you obviously nail the top in. Just like you would vinyl siding. That's about right there is where I'm going to put it. So I'll just grab a pencil and mark off where I'm going to cut it. Now one thing I've found that differs with this product uh, than vinyl siding is it tends to leave some debris on the edge that you're going to need to clean up a little bit. You may be able to just break it off or you may just have to take a knife and clean it up some. Uh, I think we're just going to get my square and make sure that this whole top is square. Quite a bit off square. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a screw through the top of it over there so that I can grab this bottom corner and pull it over a bit. 
Over on this side, I'm just going to put a screw in behind this to hold it square. All right, so due to my square issue, I decided I'm going to put some uh, braces inside here. They give you a little marker here and a little marker there and this little stop tab. And the idea is that this slides on and up against that stop tab to give you this little slot in here to match the other ones. All right, so the next piece we're going to install is actually the cutoff from the smaller piece that we put on. We left the factory edge on this side. All right, so as you can see, uh, we're up at the top and I've still got a little bit left over that I gotta fill in here. I don't wanna waste a couple of full length pieces to do this. So I've got some leftovers. So now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to run all these through the table saw and rip them back to probably about, my guess, two and a half inches. Just take our tape measure, make sure. I'm actually gonna slide this in here, but over top just to see roughly what I'm going to need that we are good at about two and three quarter inches and that is it to mount these hinges. So I'm just going to mark out where these hinges go. They go an inch and a half from the back of the plate up to this board right in here and then I'm just going to mark either side because I think I'm going to have to put these hinges on the bottom first so there now I know where they're gonna go and an inch and a half back let's take them off the top and mount them to that top plate instead So what I've got here is one by four pine and quarter inch birch ply. I would like to have done red cedar doors on the front, but unfortunately the cost of red cedar is extremely high and I'm trying to limit this build to things that I already have around or the cheapest products I can find. So two reasons I went with the birch ply. One is to make the doors as light as possible. The other is I have about a one inch space that I would like to have these doors sit in on the front of the unit so that they don't protrude from the front of my trim. So to start, we're gonna put some glue on here. So we will move on now to the cross piece. Just going to take my tape measure and measure in the distance here. We're three and a half, and there we are three and a half. Three and nine sixteenths, and three and nine sixteenths. Do the same down here. Three and nine sixteenths, and three and nine sixteenths so now i know my piece is perfectly centered and i'm going to just get my square and draw some lines where we're going to cut I 
I've cut a bunch of two by twos out of some scrap two by four that I had, and we're going to use that for the bracing on the back. Hey everyone, so I ran into a bit of an issue with the build, and uh, I like to make sure that everyone's aware of the issues that I ran into. I don't want somebody else to have the same problem. So you can see I've removed the 2x2 backing that I had on the doors. What wound up happening is, is the doors were just way too heavy for the framework of the box being only 2x3. Without fastening the top lid to the frame that I would have the strength to carry that weight of a door. All right, everyone, so I got the doors on and I wound up moving the whole enclosure over to where it's going to be located. Um, one issue I'm having is uh, getting things to square up as far as the doors go. Okay, so inside you can see that I put those in. I put corner braces in all four corners. And then up at the top, so I stuck corner brace in right there. And then over here, I put uh, a metal brace in that I brought home that was square and then I bent it so that it would fit both there and down in there. Now that, that really stabilized the whole unit as far as going back and forth and twisting. But what it didn't do is it did not stabilize right here. I'm going to show you what happens when I push down on this door. You can see that. Like it it moves considerably. So what I've done is I've gone out and bought four more of these. These ones are smaller version and I'm going to put one up here, one on the other side and then the same thing down at the bottom. With the doors stained, it's time to get them back on. As you can see, I've got uh, the top screw in on this one. So we're going to swing the door around and we're going to shim it up so that it's at the height that I need it to be. Which is going to be roughly there. Just have a quick look around the outside here. It is very windy here right now, so uh, hopefully the sound quality is good. Now this was using um, all materials, well not all, but a lot of materials that I had left over from doing the shop project. So it just made sense to uh, use it for this project. I wound up taking screws and screwing in the whole front section of this vinyl shake because I know people are going to lift here instead of lifting um, underneath on this part right here. They're, they're going to grab there including myself. So let's just open it up and there we go. I'm going to wind up ordering some uh, shocks that go on either end of it so that it will stay up on its own. Right now it is a little bit heavy. It's fine for me but I know for my wife it's going to be a little bit heavy for her to hold up like that. Alright, so that's going to wrap it up for this project. I want to thank everybody for coming out and watching this video. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll catch you all next video. Alright, so now that I've got all of my 2x4s cut down to 2x3s, I've gone ahead and cut the front 2x3 to 46 inches, which is wrong because I need to subtract 2 for the height of the iron inch and a half of that. Shit pretty level right there. I'm just going to grab a level.
All right, time to stand up the back wall and get it fastened. Mistake. I made a mistake. <laughs> I did the same thing that I did with the sides. I forgot to subtract the top rail. Well, well, well. That is not good. <laughs> 